I don't know. Maybe that's narcissism. Well, no. I mean, if you're an artist, artists, we don't create for ourselves. We create for people to see it. I'm a, I'm a fat boss. I'm a fat boss. I'm a, I'm a fat boss. Hello, all you beautiful motherfuckers. Welcome to another episode of the PhD Show. Joining me is poet and speaker, Dwayne Morgan. Hello. Thank you for joining me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, actually, we've met a few times before. That is correct. Yes, and without any disrespect or saying how old we are, you were, um, I don't know if you even remember this, but when I was in junior high, you came to uh, my school and you read some poetry. You, I think you actually had a book. Oh, then. Might it's have been your think. first book or? It's quite possible. Do you remember those rounds that you made for school? Uh, and... Well, I mean, I still do the rounds and I still go to schools and, and, and do that. So, I mean, I've been doing that for 22 years. Uh, so, you know. It's... Have you been to Oakdale since? Um, or recently? I wouldn't say recently. Oakdale was definitely a long time ago. Yeah, okay so when i that. when i brought that up in the message you must have been like whoa yeah definitely <laughs> how because... old is this person and how old am i <laughs> right right because i mean i believe that was maybe like miss reed was yeah, there at miss that reed. time yes that sounds familiar and i can't remember any of the other teachers names but miss yeah, reed and i, I used I to can't. work together she used to sing it in a lot of my shows and stuff so that's how the whole oakdale thing happened I think I actually might have met her afterwards and not even related the two. Mm -hmm. What's her first name? Lorraine. Lorraine Reed? Yep. Oh my God. I've worked with her father, Jimmy Reed. Okay. I've, d I've done a couple music videos for him mm -hmm. and also worked with his other daughter, Cora Reed. Yeah, I don't know there anybody else in the family. Just Lorraine and I used to work together. Okay. And isn't there a Tanya? I have no idea. Okay. But have you, you've heard of her father, Jimmy Reed? Um Yeah, I mean, heard of, but again, through her, I only knew her. her I didn't know her, anything okay. else. We never talked about her family, anything like that. It was just her and I worked, worked together. Okay, and it's through her that you started doing, um, speaking at school? Not speaking at schools, but um, getting to, to Oakdale. She was my connection for, for okay. Oakdale. Such a small world, Absolutely. man. Absolutely, yeah. That's crazy. That I end up doing a music video, two music videos for a father. Mm -hmm. And here you are sitting in my chair, like how many years yeah. later? Yeah, that's how it all works. Fucking small world. Yep. So what have you been up to? How many books do you have under your belt? Uh, right now I have 13 books out. And um, yeah, my ninth album just came out today. So yeah, it's been busy. Been busy? Yeah. Holy shit. 13 books and nine albums. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's putting been, a lot been. of us to shame. <laughs> it's, it's been quite the career, but I mean, I just stay busy, stay creating, stay working all the time. Yeah, I think that's the, I think that's the main thing is to keep doing and not necessarily think, I mean, have an idea of where you would like to go, but not necessarily <clears throat> focused on on the outcome mm -hmm. necessarily more more so in the act of doing i find once you've reached a goal it's not really it's for me it's never been the i've never gotten the pleasure out of when the goal is accomplished i kind of feel empty mm -hmm. it, it's the doing it's the process yeah, yeah. that i've always been attracted to right yeah i mean it's the same thing for for me and then that ties into you know, work ethic and all of these things, because, uh, you know, once you achieve the goal, then there's nothing else to work on. And I'm, I'm addicted to the work. You know what I mean? Like the goal is just me saying, all right, I did this and now I'm going to give it away to people. But the real joy is in creating what it is that I'm going to give to the people. And, and that is an ongoing, you know, pursuit and something that I, I'm focused on pretty much every day. And changing. Yeah. Changing, growing, experimenting, trying you know different things um but I have think you that's all found 
have you found in in your career that you've had to or maybe the pressures of when the creative process is time do you find that your mind is sometimes influenced by what you think the audience is expecting from you next um because you have been around and you you know you your words and your work is prevalent in mm. in in Toronto and our culture. Mm. Yeah, I would say no to that. I think the people who followed my career kind of know that I do whatever I want. Um so they expect me to do whatever I want, so they just kind of wait to see what is it that I'm going to do next. Um and I think it's it's really important, you know, to keep people um you know, once people can guess or know what you're going to do then it's you're just predictable so then it it's what's what's the joy in that i think part of the joy is giving people you know something new something different so i mean you know i write a lot of stuff about you know what's happening in the black community and stuff like that so you know i just put out a love album it has nothing to do with any of those things so you know even though all this black lives matter stuff is happening i'm just like all right now is the time to put out a love album and it's just because you know people would expect you to put out an album of you know social commentary but it's just going a completely different direction and change the narrative a little bit and just do love mm-hmm. um and i think it's it's really a matter of you know being unpredictable and keeping people on their toes and and you know challenging yourself to not just have your audience dictate what you're going to do as an artist you should always dictate what it See, is that you're going to do i think it's it's flipped these days recently or maybe not recently but i think it's flipped where before it used to be that the artist was expected to be this way expected to dress this way but now given all these new outlets that give an artist more control it's now flipped where the artist is the brand the artist is the brand is whatever the artist is in that moment. Mm-hmm. Where I recently a friend came up to me. I posted some some stupid thing about me running and and I like my dark side. I have no problem. I think beauty comes from can come from darkness. Mm-hmm. And so I posted something about that and she's heavy into into marketing world too and she had mentioned that said Fallon you know you come across as a strong woman and then you just post these 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 things where people people you're weak or something and I'm like listen my brand is whatever the fuck I am right and if I'm weak in that moment I try to show that it's can you can overcome it I'm not showing weakness out of a way of um victimizing or Mm -hmm. It's yeah, man. We all have our darkness. Let's embrace that, or we all feel like sh- we all feel like shit, or we all fail. But something beautiful can come out of that. Mm-hmm. And I think by sharing that with your audience and sharing that you have these multiple sides, like you do, this unpredictability, you, we as artists can create this niche, whatever niche we want, and survive off of it. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, you know, even in this day and age of, um, you know, social media, there's a lack of authenticity because people want to be able to put everyone in a box and just be able to say, okay, this is who this person is. But the reality is, is that, as you said, you know, there are days when I'm just like, you know, I'm thinking about social justice issues and there's days when I'm thinking about sex and I can write a sex poem or I can write a Black Lives Matter poem and they're both me. It's not like one cancels out the other or you I do can't, like your sex, sex poems. Well, thank you very much. Or, you know, you can't do this thing, but some people are like so in shock that, oh my gosh, here's this guy talking about sex. And he's like, but I'm a sexual being. Like, this is who I am. These are all parts, parts of, of me. you. Didn't you, and, didn't you have a man, uh, a man, didn't you have a thing <laughs> where it says parts of a man? Was that- uh, the, the sum of her parts. Some of her parts. Right. right. The sum of her parts. Yeah. So, I mean, I, it was, it was interesting for the last few years, I was producing uh, an erotica show uh, once a year and it was like the most fun I would have on stage and everybody who came, mm-hmm. it was like so much fun uh, the way that we put the show together. And there were some people who'd be like, all right, make sure I'm not in any of the pictures. I don't want anyone to know I'm here and whatever. And I'm just like, all right, that's cool. You know what I mean? But it's like, you know, people are just, there's so many, you know, taboos about just being yourself. And it's like, you know, I just try to 
every day just just be me if the day sucks the day sucks like there's nobody who's positive all the time there's nobody who's just this one thing all the time it just doesn't well, then work you'd have some way. issues if you were you, that way all the time or one <laughs> way all the time you'd have some serious issues absolutely but it's like you know people don't want you to show the different sides of yourself or the complexities of who you are and it's like but we're all of that and then now we're entering or we've already entered we're in this cancel culture world where we can't say anything without maybe everything being taken away from you mm -hmm. and i think that's that's a, a horrible thing and it's funny because just last week i started writing some ideas down for a poem i wanted to write about you know that whole cancel culture stuff because it's like you know i create and as i said i give you know stuff away and what happens is you know with cancel culture if we can't separate the art from the artist is that we end up in a world where we just keep erasing all of this art um and for me i can always separate the artist and the art the art is something that somebody made and gave to the world what you chose to do in your personal life, I don't necessarily have to agree with it or whatever, but I can still appreciate the art that you created. And I think when we keep erasing all of this art, then what are we left with? And I think it's... I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't look so good. Well, absolutely. So but good. that's the world that we're moving towards where, you know, the minute somebody gets canceled, you know, if they had a 20-year career, then there's 20 years of work that we just... That Completely destroyed. disappears. Yes. And it's like, why would we do that? You know what I mean? Make them disappear. Stop supporting them or whatever. But the work that they created, I think, is, you know, completely different. And, you know, I've gotten into a lot of debates and arguments, you know, with people around stuff like that. Like um, Michael Jackson. There was a lot you of... You know, Michael Jackson, R. Kelly, you know, all of this kind of stuff. And it's like, you know, for me, I can separate the work from the artist. And, you know, you know, R. Kelly is probably, you know, one of the more controversial ones. And, you know, for me, when I watched, you know, the, the latest documentary thing about him, one of the um, alleged victims said, uh, you know, that, what was it? She said, R. Kelly is the sweetest guy that you will ever meet, but Robert is the devil. And I'm like, and that's the key to the whole thing. We don't know Robert. Robert could very well be the devil. But R. Kelly created some art that many of us grew up on, mm -hmm. listened to, bumped, have memories to. So we've canceled, you know, all of this music that, you know, soundtracks to different parts of our upbringing and whatever. My thing would be, let's cancel Robert. Mm. Because... And then that goes along with having different parts of you. Showing the different parts. Absolutely. Being, well, we're not okay with showing all those parts. Because mm -hmm. some of them are evil. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and I, but I think that all of that adds to how we create, what we put out into the, what we put out into the world. Um, I think it's getting to the point where now we're getting down to such specifics of, so this person is allowed to say this under these circumstances, but then this person can't say this. And it's, it, there's so many nuances mm -hmm. where you would, one would think it's black and white, but it's such gray areas of, okay, well, if you cancel this, then, then why is this still, why can people still watch this? Mm -hmm. but, well, I mean, a good example of that is, I mean, if we look at, you know, the Harvey Weinstein situation, it's like, all right, we cancel Harvey Weinstein, but you can still watch, watch movies that cutie. he produced. What and is all of these cutie things. pie? So, what is that cutie thing? Well, I don't even know. If, was he involved in that one? Or no, but I mean, overall? it's just kind of ironic, crazy that Netflix puts out Harvey Weinstein and then cutie. The, have you seen? I have have seen you it. heard about that? I, I watched it. It's like, yeah, here is this horrible sex trafficking pedophile that we want to put away. And oh, after you're done, let's watch some <laughs> young children mm -hmm. dance around. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 so complicated. And then we have to look at, well, who 
decides who gets canceled and what level of canceling and is there redemption after being canceled can you come back from you know mm. being canceled because you know uh, also I think people some people have come back I don't know. I feel like some some political woman, I forget her name. I'm horrible with names. But she said something and then she came back. But I mean, her career is not the same. But again, as you're saying, who determines on who gets canceled? How do you do you come back after you're canceled? Who 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 determines that? Mm -hmm. It's it's yeah, I mean, it's. It's so complicated and black and, mirror. We're living in black mirror times. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much, and it's um, yeah. I think it's very unfortunate because you know, especially when you look at artists, artists are the ones who are supposed to push the envelope. We're supposed to, you know, even when you look at you know stand up comedians and stuff, probably more so than anybody, they say some of the most inappropriate things. But it's said in such a way that you're supposed to, you know, look at the satire and the truth in, in it and, and, you know, kind of break it down and discuss it. But their role is to push, you know, the envelope of the things that we're discussing. And when you're an artist living in a world of cancel culture, then now instead of just creating your art, you're thinking about, well, how do I say this? How are people going to receive this? Mm -hmm. Am I going to get canceled for, for saying this? Is this too far of a push of the boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I think we start to limit our creativity because now we're starting to think about the ramifications of our art instead of just creating the art. Mm. Or you could use it as a challenge and somehow create, not saying to do this all the time, but I, I, kind of like Dr. Seuss, how he challenged himself to write a book with X amount of syllables or whatever the fuck he did. But it, it, it's almost it can, it can you can look at it as a challenge and I do see some people using this time as as a way to they're harnessing it in, in a way to benefit themselves with their career and their work that they do um, coming out with content and yeah using this cancel culture in a way that not only informs what the fuck is going on in this world with cancel culture, but also to to step out and use your brain and make a decision for yourself instead of following um, the sheep. I mean, I think, yeah, I agree with that. And I mean, I've been putting out a lot of different content and stuff, but I think, you know, for me, it's like, you know, this is the 27th year of my career. And now we're living in a in a time where you can write something or say something and 27 years gets erased. And I think like, so then you're just like, well, is it worth it? Because I could put out this thing and some people might like it. And then, you know, some people might say, okay, we got to cancel this. And then it's like 27 years down the drain. Then what do I do? You know yeah. what I mean? So, I mean, it creates a situation that is very stifling for those people who create, for those people who want to. Well, I feel that the people who create... When I when I create, I don't think about it being left behind. I I just need to. Mm. So whether it's going to be erased or not, no, you know what? I do want people to hear my stuff. No, that would be kind of, you know. I just realized no, that would be. That would feel pointless mm -hmm. to create something that I know nobody would hear or see. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe that's narcissism. Well, no. I mean, if you're an artist, artists, we don't create for ourselves. We create for people to see it, for people to interact with it, to give it away so that people have something to look at, to discuss, to, to take their mind off of things. So if you're creating and you're just creating for yourself because nobody else cares because you've been canceled, then what's the point? Mm. So, I mean, even for myself, you know, with my daughter, I've been, you know, for years, like, I was showing her like the Cosby show and stuff like that because I'm like there's never that's that was you know the first very unique positive family whatever she loves the show but you can't find a Cosby show on TV because Bill Cosby's been canceled right but that is such an important show in black culture yeah 
in black history, in the black community, so many positive, um, you know, messages, the artwork that was in there, like all of these things that were so positive and so beneficial to, you know, me growing up. And even, you know, my daughter still finds a lot of the stuff in there funny and, and whatever, but because he's been canceled because what he did, you can't even find the show. It's gone. Right. Completely gone. And I think that's, that's Is it really, I have not searched for it. But I I grew up I grew up on that show and I love that show and yeah so I mean you cancel all of this stuff because of what one person did outside of that right it's not like it's different if you know he was in jail because of things he did on the set while creating that show but what he did in his personal life yeah you know what you and there are assholes. People are assholes. Yeah. So you know what? And and not to say that this is an excuse or anything like that, but like back then we all knew how the game works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean the the, the like, world is a is a is a like different place. Like those women, I'm no. sorry, knew how the game worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, it's 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 an unfortunate situation, but it's it's the world that we're kind of living in right now, and I think it really. Uh, stunts a lot of um, creativity that that we could see and things that could really happen. I mean, I, I'll, I'll also say that, yeah, you know what? If you're a total loser and you do certain things, yeah, you should be held responsible for it. Um, does that mean that the work that you created should be canceled? I don't agree with that. But I think you should always be held responsible for the things that you chose to do. Oh, definitely. And and also arts are people's work speak for themselves, especially now. There's so many options. There's so many, so much shit to see and listen. If you don't like something, just move on to the next thing. You mm -hmm. don't have to completely fucking destroy somebody's life. Just move on to the thing that you like. There's yeah. lots out there for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. I totally I totally agree. There's so many options but it's like there's the the cancel police now so you know it's like we're just looking for you know who steps out of line and yeah uh, well speaking of um the cancel culture and and comedians and artists there's this um comedian in toronto ben bankus not familiar you know, with him he was on the podcast and um you know he's he was doing uh comedy shows all throughout covid outside in the park and he was fined and all charged mm -hmm. i think he was and here's somebody who as an example of taking something that's happened happening in our society that's negative and how can we how can we make a positive and also show people maybe the hypocrisy that's going on mm -hmm. um i mean yeah that stuff is is Interesting. I mean, in this time, everybody's just trying to trying figure to do their it out thing, man. Trying to like, do their thing. Yeah, it's so unprecedented. Nobody saw this coming. Like I thought, this you know the way this year started for me, I was like, all right, this is gonna be the but, year. So how are you doing? Because you you're a speaker, mm -hmm. and has that a, has this COVID crap affected that? Yeah. So I mean, I haven't been on stage since March. Um, you know, I've done some digital learning things with the with the schools and stuff like that, but really all of my teaching, performing, speaking is all like dead in the water right now. So, you know, for me, I've been looking at, you know, different things to do. So, you know, I've um, done a lot more with my photography. I've written a film. I've just been, you know, just trying to do some some different things uh, just to keep myself active. Oh, film, eh? Mm-hmm. You want to talk about it? Uh, sure. I mean, so I'm, I'm working. I have a few um, film ideas that I'm working on. The, the script that is finished is a film called A Moment Between Friends. And it's about these four, um, four guys, lifelong friends, teenagers in, in high school. And um, one day... They're, they're drinking, they're high after school, and one guy bets his friends that he can get his girlfriend to sleep with them. And the rest of the guys are young teenagers, like, yeah, whatever, we, we doubt you can make it happen, but if you make it happen, we're down for it, and whatever. 
He realizes he's probably not going to be able to make it happen. So he ends up drugging her to make it happen so that he doesn't lose face with his boys. And then the rest of the film is how that all dismantles because you're looking at the loyalty between these friends whose conscience is weighing on them because of what happened. You know, what happens when they found out that she was drugged and not that she was a willing participant and all of these things and how it affects you know their their bond as friends so oh shit that's intense it is i was right in there (laughs) so that is uh that that film is is written and done uh i'm working on a another one called um black market which is about a um a member of like black lives matter um and she's just kind of trying to unearth this conspiracy theory uh, around all of the gun violence in any urban community, but in the black communities, and um, starts to unravel um, this um, program where black men are being killed to harvest their organs for sale on the black market. So, doing that, and then also working on an animated film or writing an animated. Oh, film. so you you like the more like Disney. You know, well, the animated film very, is more very, Disney. Very funny, uplifting kind of kind of writing. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the other Sunday afternoon. The kinda. ones for the adults are that are very dark, Shit. you know, yeah. and and very intense. Um, but then I'm also like writing something that's very. So you these are fin- You're in the middle of writing Black Market. Yes. So a moment between friends script is totally done. Um, Black Market starting on the uh writing for that and I've now started. are you just in the writing process right now where you're just kind of vomiting out the scripts and and hopefully shooting in the next year or something uh well you know what film isn't really my my area so i mean right well writing is so i mean i have it done and then i have to look at well what the hell do you do when you have a script Right. So then it's a matter of, you know, trying to talk to people, meet people who might be interested in trying to, you know, work at either getting funding or do we just want to try and film this like guerrilla style and just get it done and then, you know, be like, hey, we have this film. Um, So I'm pretty open to ideas and options around that stuff right now. My thing is, well, writing is my forte. So I'm just trying to get the writing part done so that we actually have a script that we can present and be like, hey, here's here's the script. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not, hey, um, I have this idea and um, like if you give me lots of money, I can make this happen. Yeah, so I'm not about that. I just want to have a finished product that people can look at, read and be like, I think this is viable. You know, let's move it to the next level. So um, right now kind of, you know, starting to to meet people in the in the film world and stuff and kind of Yeah, those film waters. people are pretty uptight, pretty snotty. They, they, I mean, from what I hear, they can be, but I think, pretty you know. Stush. If they if they come across a story that they think is viable, everybody gets motivated by the potential to make money. So I mean, well, know. I went to Toronto Film School, man. Those those people are stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I will I will go based on your experience and expertise. Well, yeah. They treat the sound people like fucking shit, man. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, like you know, if the sound sucks, then you know, so you, it's in your best interest to treat them proper because yeah. you, know, you want the best yes. possible sound. Yes, right? so. exactly. Yeah, always be nice to the people who are handling your shit. I'm a, I'm a fat boss. I'm a fat boss. I'm a, I'm a fat boss. I'm a fat boss. I'm a, I'm a fat boss. I'm a fat boss. I'm a, I'm a fat boss. I'm a fat 